This is the last section in the Radiance chapter, chapter five, year two, pure. And it's something called the small angle approximations. Now, there's some graphs here that maybe will help us understand. So the graphs in yellow, so in this, uh, or in red, in this first graph here, that red line is the graph of y equals theta. And the black line is the graph of sine theta. And you can see the bit I've highlighted in yellow, they pretty much are the same value, aren't they? As like theta gets bigger, they sort of diverge and the graphs go further apart. Um, but when the theta is small, when it's close to zero, so I would probably say between maybe here and here, between those values, it's pretty close. Yeah, um, I would say that you could approximate sine theta with theta. They're pretty much the same value. And that gives us the first small angle approximation, which is sine theta. Let's do that in the highlight pen. Sine theta can be approximated to theta when, and it's really important, when theta is small when theta is small and it needs to be measured in radians yeah so not degrees these are small angle approximations when the angle is measured in radians if we we're going to jump to the tan graph at the end and uh, let's color code it so here again you can see the graph of tan and the graph of y equals theta, tan theta and theta, they're pretty much the same. Again, in this sort of band here, the graphs are pretty much together. Yeah? As you go further from out, out from that, the, the graphs diverge. So again, we've got another small angle approximation, which is tan theta can be approximated to theta again when theta is small and measured in radians so we've got an approximation there that we can use this is useful and the last one if we have a look at the graph of cos theta and a graph of 1 minus theta squared over 2 so it's a quadratic in this sort of little band here you could sort of say they're pretty close together almost identical further out from there there they diverge so the last approximation here is that cos theta can be approximated to 1 minus theta squared over 2 now these smaller angle approximations are given in the formula book so you don't need to memorize them so let's have a look at uh, an example when uh, theta is small find the approximate value right okay so what we're going to do is use those approximations. So I'll just write them up here. Sine theta can be approximated to theta. Tan theta can be approximated to theta. These are the easy ones to remember. And then cos theta can be approximated to one minus theta squared over two. And all we need to do is just to substitute so since here in A we have sine 2 theta, that means we can approximate it to 2 theta. Tan theta can be approximated to theta. And all of that is just over 2 theta. So what does that become? 3 theta over 2 theta, 3 over 2. Okay, so if theta was small, you could approximate that whole expression in A, you could approximate it to one and a half, basically three over two. Right, let's do the same thing in B. So this time we've got cos four theta. So basically we take our approximation um, or we take the theta part and we're gonna put four theta there. So it becomes, the cos four theta becomes one minus four theta all squared over two 
minus 1 all over theta times by sine 2 theta so times by 2 theta okay so we just put those in to approximate them right so um, what's going to happen I've got 1 minus 1 okay so uh, that and that's going to cancel out that will leave me with uh, 14 uh, sorry let's write that down negative 16 theta squared um, over 2 all divided by um, that'll be 3 uh, that will be 3 that'll be 2 theta squared okay which is the same as negative 16 theta squared over 2 if it's dividing by that we're times in by its reciprocal okay what's going to happen here so that cancels out with that um, I suppose the 2 you can cancel that down with the negative 60 to leave you with 8 and then the 8 and the 2 are going to cancel out so it just leaves you with 4 so we're basically left with um, negative 4 as the answer on that one I realize I made a mistake so it's just negative 4 you might see in the book it says 4 I think that's a mistake that should say uh, negative 4 and you can try it for yourself on your uh, calculator if you if you were to um, maybe pick theta as a very small value so I tried it with theta equally 0.1 and I put it into um, that cos uh, 4 theta so I did this cos 4 times 0 0.1 so it's small I made sure my calculator was in radians no minus 1 and I then did 0 0.1 times by um, so basically I've substituted 0 0.1 into part B just so that I can check to see what comes out and then sign off 2 times 0 0.1 and you get negative 3.97 so that's pretty good I think that's a you know it's a good approximation okay right uh, show that when theta is small um, that that can be um, approximated by that so again I'm just going to write down what the approximations are sine theta we approximate to theta tan theta we can approximate to theta that's not a very good approximation sign so let's try it again and cos theta can be approximated to 1 minus theta squared over 2 okay right so it's basically just substitution so we've got sine 5 theta okay so sine 5 theta we can replace with 5 theta tan 2 theta we can just replace with 2 theta and then minus if it's cos 2 theta so I'm going to subtract 1 minus 2 theta all squared over 2 okay and it's just about simplifying this now okay so let's deal with the what we got outside the bracket so that's going to give me 7 theta there minus in the brackets we've got I'm going to put these over the same de denominator so I can deal with them so that'll be 1 which is 2 over 2 and then that's 2 theta all squared becomes 4 theta squared over 2 so let's deal with that bit in the bracket so we'll end up with um, negative so um, together that will become 2 minus 4 theta squared all over 2 that simplifies um, to um, 
I suppose I didn't really need to put my percent in on my lids. I could have left them as they were. Um, minus one plus two theta squared. There we go. So I just rearrange it into the form that they want. It's like quadratic two theta um, plus two theta squared plus seven theta minus one. There we go. Part B. Hence, state the approximate value of that for small values of theta. Okay. So for small values of theta, let's write write it out. This is going to be it's going to be approximately this. Okay. And let's think what's going to happen when theta is small. Small. Right, when theta is small, this is going to be small. When you square a small number, it gets even smaller. And when you times it by two, it's still very small. Okay. When you times a small number by theta, it's still very small. So it's going to be these two bits here, which we can practically ignore because they're going to be very small. The only thing that's not going to be affected by theta is the negative one. So all that's left is negative one. So I would say the approximate value of five sine five theta plus tan two theta minus cos two theta when theta is small, I would say is negative one because that's pretty much all that's left. The rest is too small to, to really care about. Okay, exercise 5F on pages 134 to 135. You can do those now.